in by Reconte Hot Sauce, Pura Vida in a bottle. The flavor revolution has begun, and Reconte is here to fill the void with an epic lineup of hot sauces direct from Costa Rica. Turn home, looking to get back to their winning ways. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Kyle Cruz, along with my broadcast partner, Ashley Bullington, and welcome to another edition of TCU Soccer on Fox. We have a really good matchup in store for you today as TCU takes on a ranked opponent. It's the number 23 Butler Bulldogs. We're coming off a 2-0 loss on the road at the Baylor Bears on Thursday last time out. And TCU, they suffered a setback of their own on the West Coast against number 7 Santa Clara. A 3-0 loss in that matchup. Ashley, today a very critical matchup for these two teams as they both look to get back on the right track heading in the conference play. It definitely is. You know, both these teams had really hard games on the beginning of the week. You know, Baylor is always a strong team. Santa Clara is one of the best in the country. Butler has to go into today's game, you know, carrying the momentum that they kind of lost against Baylor. You know, they were playing really well at the beginning of the season. Um, and, I mean, it's it's one of those hard situations for them where they're on the road in the heat uh, in a kind of an environment they're not really used to. TCU has the upper hand today. So you've got TCU coming in, you know, off of loss to Santa Clara. It's their first loss of the season. They have to regroup and really say to themselves, okay, we're playing back at home. This is our territory. We win at home. You have to win at home. And if you can find a way to win a Sunday game, which is really hard uh, for any team to do, you know, you're already you're already having the upper hand on the entire situation, being able to carry the momentum into next week, which is when conference play starts. TCU and Butler ready to wrap up conference play. We do it on Fox after this timeout. Not just from any leaders, but from good people who are driven to make a difference. Now more than ever, the world needs a university like TCU, where every day, horned frogs are exploring what's possible, setting aside ego and personal gain, all so we can blaze a new trail and become an unrelenting force for the greater good. We are TCU. Lead on. Football Saturday is behind us, which means it is Soccer Sunday here in Fort Worth. TCU and number 23, Butler, ready to get after it here in Fort Worth. I'm going to take a look at our starting lineup for this. And first for number 23, Butler, there's one to watch up front. It's going to be number four, Paige Monahan, Mac Herman, watch list. She's a good one. She definitely is. She creates things up top for, for this team. You know, there's a reason that Butler's ranked number 23 in the country, and she's a piece of the puzzle for them. And being led by the Butler Bulldogs today, they actually have co-head coaches, Terry St. John and Rob. Bob Alman is Terry St. John in her 13th season here with Purdue Sevens as the co-head coach. You take a look at that all-time record, 122-125, 2017 coaching staff up there. It's kind of an interesting makeup, Ashley. Two minds are better than one. I like that they have a female head coach as well as a male head coach. Um, I don't think there's enough female head coaches in, in NCAA women's soccer. So to me, like this is a really good thing for them. I mean, there's been a lot of teams that do do co-head coaches. Flip it over now to TCU in this one, Ashley. We talked about Paige Monahan. Now it's time to look for the front line for TCU. Maddie Warren, she had a big week last week. I mean, she's Big 12 player, freshman player of the week. That's a huge honor for her. I mean, she's really making a name for herself. She's scoring goals. She's creating, she's creating things up top with Messiah Bright. Um, not only that, but she's like, she's a, there's freshmen up top. They're competing and they're playing well. Being led by TCU, the head man Eric Bell in year number seven out of the College of Woosters helped turn this TCU program around. Take a look at that all-time record, 54, 49, and 16. Two straight Big 12 tournament championship games. That's finished in the Big 12 last year. Third place, the Frogs finished 6 and 2 inside the Big 12, all under the tutelage of Eric Bell. As we are underway here on Soccer Sunday here in Fort Worth. Is Butler possessing it to begin this one as TC tries to move it ahead. Ashley, early on in this one, teams coming off losses. I think you want to see the energy of these two groups who tries to take the momentum early. Yeah, I mean, energy is a big thing. You also want to see who can kind of just battle it out longer. It's a hot day in the middle of, it's a hot day in the middle of the day. Um, Sunday games are always ugly because you're coming off a Friday or a Thursday game. Um, there's not a lot of turnaround. 
uh, you don't have the whole week to prepare and on top of that like you're having to re kind of figure out your game plan a little bit because what happened against Santa Clara and what happened against Baylor for these two teams wasn't what they planned on doing it wasn't what they had worked out on paper so it's one of those okay how can we come back and just just regroup ourselves now 90 degrees on the dot here in Fort Worth at kickoff in this one is Cash J. Lewin. Nice play getting that one out of the 18 right there as Butler trying to get something going in the offensive third to open up this ball game. Cash and the back line have been terrific so far here in 2018. Only five goals allowed in the eight games TCU has played, albeit three of them came in the loss on Thursday. A really good Santa Clara squad. And we discussed it before the broadcast, Ashley. That right there, two things in that matchup. First of all, TCU, they hung tough with Santa Clara for the first 25, 30 minutes of that match uh, before the first Santa Clara goal. There's a couple of positives to take out of this. First, you saw you could play with one of the best teams in the country, head-to-head. -head. And number two, it's a nice measuring stick early in the year for Eric Bell to see where his team is at. It's always hard when you lose your first game, but it's also a positive when you lose your first game. Because when you do lose that first game, you see what you need to work on. You see that, you know, there's certain things that are still Still, that are still being that are still problems in your in your system in your performance so having that loss and against such a good team it's promising because they know where they need to work on and they also they held them to zero zero for the first 25 minutes of the game and they attacked well but it's really to me and you know we've talked about this multiple times it's closing down and making less of those defensive errors in the back I think like what you said before the broadcast, a young team, you got to learn how to lose. You got to know how to bounce back and handle that adversity. TCU early on in this one trying to something going against the Bulldogs. Here's Cash Shea Lou with it on the back line. She'll go over Shea Hubbard and Ashley talking about how TCU hung with Santa Clara in that contest. I think you could argue they actually outplayed the Bulldogs for a good portion of the first 30 minutes, but Santa Clara netted that first goal and kind of got the momentum rolling as Tara Smith gets this one inside the 18, poked away though. And now escorting it to the in line is Amanda Kowalski, the sophomore out of Arlington Heights, Illinois. One of the things that we, we talk about a lot is, you know, how young this team is. They have so many girls who are sophomores and freshmen. I mean, oh, wow. Uh, you know, you see these girls getting in there and creating that kind of stuff. It's, but the one thing that we don't see very often, especially with TCU at home, is when they get down is what happens when they're down a goal. They've, they've been down a goal once since we've watched them here. And it's it's hard for them. It's hard to kind of figure out your team's identity when you just don't really know how to lose. You don't know how to get down. You don't, like, if you constantly win, which I'm not saying winning is ever a bad thing, but I think with these young players that they have, you know, getting that loss underneath them and learning how to lose is more beneficial now than in the middle of conference play because that could really shock a team if they're not used to it. And no one's going to hang their head for losing at number seven Santa Clara. It's, that's a pedigree pop soccer program, one that Ryan Higginbotham, the TCU assistant, pointed out beginning of the year, a non-conference match they were very excited about is Shaylin Hubbard tries to get something going on the attack here. Once again, there's Amanda Kowalski stepping in at number five on the back line for Butler. As I mentioned, good player out of Illinois, a three-sport player in high school, also basketball and a track runner. Helps set the school record for the 4 by 400 relay her senior year is this one trying to play out front. There's Kowalski. She plays this one out, but it's going to be our first corner of the matchup. As right there, a good job as I believe that was Shea Hubbard setting up the offensive opportunity right there. It, I mean, that's a good that's a good creation for TCU. They really got in there and made Baylor have to play defense. You know, the more that they attack, the quicker they're going to be able to get on the front end of Baylor and not have another Santa Clara moment where they get behind. Peyton Cruz to flip this one out front, sends it. And there's a bulldog there to knock that one away, and now Cruz will go retrieve it. Fires in with the left. Not a Tara Smith, but the Bulldogs play this one out of the box. Nice play right there as Maddie Warren was there, but the opportunity is thwarted. Ashley talked about Maddie at the beginning of the broadcast. Freshman of the week inside the Big 12, game-winning goal against Missouri. A couple of goals against Arkansas Little Rock leads this team in scoring right now four goals nine points on the season She has been terrific so far in her freshman campaign Played back ahead now There's Warren with it Over to 
Messiah Bright and Ashley TC, they got a couple of terrific freshmen that are help pushing the offensive attack. Messiah Bright and Maddie Warren, they're so advanced for their age right now. Yeah, I mean, they have more than that. They've got Hubbard on the backside. They've got Brandy Peterson playing, Isabel Juarez in there. I mean, this team's a, a pretty young team, and these freshmen have really stepped in and, and shown why they're a ranked class. A lot of youth, but a lot of ability, too, as you get another look at those freshmen, two-time national champion out in Florida, Peyton Cruz. She's ready to throw this one in here. As she directs traffic inside the 18, fires it. And headed up in the air. I believe that was Kari that got her head on it. Yeah, Thomas Stoddard's there. So now outside of the 18 now is Smith. Sends it back. Shot from distance is blocked right there. Hubbard got a good look at it. But there were three Bulldogs right there. Now Tara Smith is right there. And that was played out of bounds. Right there, break that down for us, Ashley. That's good defense right there. Butler right there staying in each lane. Tough for Hubbard to find a way to get that shot through. I mean, definitely. D uh, Butler's been playing really good defensively. You know, they take away the shot here. Um, they try to distribute it out. They take away another angle. Um, and Smith just kind of gets pushed off the ball because they've, they've got a really strong big defense back there. Coming off the 2 nothing loss, you feel like defense is something they may have emphasized this week. They gave up a couple. And then again, they kind of struggled offensively. They had a hard time getting things going in Waco. Uh, yeah, I think it's something that you need to stress, um, making sure that your system is shot from distance goes wide right there continue that though. making sure that your system is fine-tuned um, the one thing that you know about Butler is that they're always a good team um, the Big East has really good soccer um, and they recruit really well uh, so it's one of those things like you know they're always gonna be a good team but they're gonna have defensive breakdowns they're gonna have offensive breakdowns so it's really you know fine-tuning after the fact and watching the tape and seeing you know this is what happened here so we can't let this happen again if this is if our balance is off at any point in time somebody's gonna slip somebody's gonna find a hole and slip it through um, so it's just really like making sure that you're everything's fine-tuned in the long run so that you know situations like that where they lose to Baylor don't happen look at this season for Butler so far outside of the big 12 opponents they've played it's been a really strong campaign as mentioned the national ranking coming in six and two they have a 4-1 win over 20th ranked Notre Dame earlier this year. The other setback though coming at number 19 Kansas. TC knows how tough the Jayhawks are. They have been a problem in recent years. This is played out now to Shea Hubbard. Here comes Shea now looking to make a move one on one. Crosses over here, gets it inside, flips it. That one's gonna be knocked out of bounds though. Nice play by Hannah Lucky. That'll give us a nice segue to introduce you to the keeper here for the Butler Bulldogs. Hannah Lucky, the 5'8 redshirt junior out of North Barrington, Illinois, makes a nice save right here, Ashley. This is a really good shot coming from the outside from Hubbard. It was good movement from the TCU offense. Um, but you know, she just gets a hold of it um, and she covers outside. She probably knew that that was gonna go out, but better to be safe than sorry and get your hands on. On it. Okay, the flip side of that, though, actually, now that creates a TCU corner, is that something you just have to do as the keeper, though? You can't take that chance? Uh, it just, if you have any questions on the ball, then go for it. Cruz sends this one out front. There's no Horn Frogs in the area. Coming up with it on the back end is Shea Hubbard as she'll flip it back over to Peyton now. Wanted to get it out front, but Butler doing a good job early on being accountable inside the 18. This one's fired back inside the 18. Once again, there's a Bulldog stepping in front. This one's played towards the end line and now fired back out. Let's see, that one is going to, let's see, oh, that's gonna be another corner, yes it is. And you see right there, Ashley, no shots on net right there, but that's good offensive pursuit. It's gonna lead to an offensive opportunity here off the corner. Yeah, I mean, we've talked about this multiple times this season. The more that you can attack, the more that you can kind of put your players in those situations and the more opportunities that they can create, they might not be on goal, but something could happen, you know, the keeper could drop the ball or it could ricochet off to the right person. And the fact that you took the opportunity is the the reason that you're getting getting the goal in the long run. Kayla Hill will take this corner. She fires it out on the backside. There's a horn frog there. Shot. Another header. This one's going to go up and over the net right there. As I believe that was Thomas Stoddard and then Maddie Warren. Yes, it was. As Warren bidding for her fifth goal of the year, just high of the net. Another thing to keep an eye on, Ashley, is this one goes early on as we get another look right here. Good work inside the 18 by TCU. Yeah, I mean they're they're winning the ball in the air there. That's something that you know they kind of struggle with every so often um, but like like I've said you know if you can win the air game you're more likely to win the game in general um, that's that's a that's a part of the women's game that's so hard to master because you know just just how the ball how the ball goes up in the air you know how the how to control it that kind of stuff it's harder for women to play that kind of game so when you're winning those those balls and you're getting on top of it especially when you're in the box creating opportunities I mean they're really hard to 
um, like a, a ball off your head is really hard to like kind of figure out where it's going. So it's one of those, if you can win it, you can get in there and really attack the goal um, and win through the air, you're gonna have a better opportunity. And this opportunity thwarted by the Bulldogs. We'll play this one ahead now. They keep this one inbounds, but TCU's gonna recollect here as Thomas Stoddard had it for the Bulldogs. Take it away. Miscommunication right there. We'll get back over to the Horn Frogs. Good look right there, Brianne Pimpick. The throw in from Shea Hub. Play ahead. Pimpick steals it away for Butler. Bulldogs now control it on the defensive end. Now there's Thomas Stoddard. Play it in the middle. This one's played back ahead, and now that'll go into Hannah Lucky. Now we'll give you the intro on Hannah Lucky, the keeper for the Butler Bulldogs. As I mentioned, the 5'8 redshirt junior out of North Barrington, Illinois. 16 Big East All-Freshman a couple of years ago. A 26-9-5 career record in this year. She owns a 6-0 record to go along with a .29 goals against average. Has allowed a lone goal this year, 8.57 save percentage of this mark as there goes her counterpart in this one Katie Lund as we'll give you Katie's numbers here momentarily and actually the other thing to keep in mind moving forward they do your favorite thing with Butler they go by committee in goal as they're gonna more than likely put Leona Daigie in in the second half is in the first in the first half we're gonna get to see the starter though Hannah Lucky we both know that's not my favorite thing <laughs> I am not a platoon person um, I can appreciate anybody who does platoon um, if, especially if you have kind of the mindset to platoon, but I don't have the mindset to platoon goalkeepers, nor did I like being platooned. So I think it's an interesting thing that they're doing. Um, it, to me, yeah, I can understand if you have a really good team and you have two good goalkeepers, um, why not give them both a try and see which one you want to carry in the long run? Do I think they keep it going all season? No, I don't. Yeah, the Bulldogs have been successful doing it so far as Lucky has started all eight ball games. Leonie Day, their second half goalie for the German national team. Like I said, we will likely see her later in the contest. But it's Lucky in the first half. As TCU tries to get something going offensively. Butler will send it back ahead. There's Brandy Peterson in the middle of Thomas' daughter. Here comes Peyton Cruz. A little bit of room for Cruz. Wanted to chip that one in front. Bulldogs are there. And now, one frog there in the area. I believe that was Messiah Bright. Yes, it was. And here comes Tara Smith. Smith's got it. Shot with a left as she sends this one in. Peyton Cruz was there, knocked away. Now Tara with it right back outside the 18. Tries to make a move between a couple of defenders. Now Kayla Hill. Nice pass. She gets it over to Hubbard. Shea's got it. Dust it off. Send it out front. But there's Hannah Lucky as she hauls that one in for the first true save of the contest for either keeper. As she'll go ahead and dispatch this one out as now Butler will get to go on the offensive. Actually, how important that is a keeper to see that first one in and get that first save. I think it's just keeping your mindset in it throughout the whole 90 minutes of the game. Um, yeah, it's good when you have that save that's being made. Granted, you just don't want to be making saves. You want you don't want them in the in your box. Um, but it helps with your mindset. Definitely helps you, you know, stay in tune to the game because um, that's sometimes hard to do back there. I felt like that was what was kind of tough for Emily Alvarado in, on Thursday night against Santa Clara. This one's sitting in the middle here, Kayla Hill. Gets it inside. Warren wanted to send it back in, but now Hill's going to have to recollect. I mentioned Emily Alvarado had a hard time settling into that ball game. The Frogs trying to get something going offensively here. This one's sent up and over the wide the net to give Lucky the goal kick. Finish that thought now. Emily Alvarado, as I mentioned, TCU played really well the first 25, 30 minutes of the contest against Santa Clara. Dominated possession, we're winning the shots battle early on, but then all of a sudden it just took one quality opportunity from Santa Clara in tight inside near the six. And before you knew it, Emily Alvarado, the first action she saw was point blank range and really didn't have a very good opportunity to make a save on it. And really felt like she had a hard time settling into the ball game after that. Although she, she was peppered though, Ashley. 14 shots in the game, nine of them on goal and all beat against a top 10 opponent. I mean, it's, it's hard. Sometimes your nerves get the best of you, um, you know, 
every ball at some point in time is savable. I'll have coaches that'll tell you that. There's also just really good shots that are hard. Um, you know, Emily's a good goalkeeper though, and she knows how to play in pressure situations. Um, so, I mean, I don't think that the pressure was anything that was getting to her. Maybe it was just she uh, was a little bit nervous out there. Or maybe she just was off her game a little bit, but whatever it was, um, I don't think it was so much as her as a whole defensive breakdown. Um, you know, before it even gets to the goalkeeper, most people will blame goalkeepers because it's easy to blame, to blame a goalkeeper. You know, it's point blank on to the goal when in fact like it takes there's 10 other players that it has to get through in order for it to get to the goalkeeper so there was breakdowns other places that caused those goals similar to the quarterback in football right he's one it always gets the, gets the blame for it but then i always blame the quarterback though yeah uh, <laughs> we won't we won't get into my discussion about yesterday's game as this one's played across now towards the sideline is a couple of frogs there i should say a couple of bulldogs there the horn frog there is tara smith as she'll throw this one in as this one's played ahead by Butler. This one's sent back in. I think she thought that the head official there was one of her teammates. <laughs> as it was Marco Vega right there. She went to pass it to him and he said, well, I'd like to take it, but I don't think I'm allowed to do that. As this one's... Their socks kind of matches jersey. I know, right? I was saying the same. Ashley, is, he's got the yellow shirt. They've got the yellow socks going on as this one's moved ahead. And there's Cache Lou as she welcomes Brianne Pimpick to Fort Worth right there as she puts it on her backside. By the way, first substitution of the contest, Morgan Klusterman checked in for Amanda Kowalski, and that's something to keep an eye on, Ashley, with the hot temperatures today. Got to keep fresh bodies in the ballgame. Yes, that is something that you definitely need to be doing because it is a scorcher out here. There's just nothing else I can say other than how hot it is. Um, and Sunday games are ugly, like I've told you. So part of part of the reason that Sunday games are so ugly is because it is so hot outside. You know, we soccer players play in the the literal dead heat of the year. Like July's hot, but August by far is always the hottest. And then September it carries on too, especially down here in the south. So it's just kind of beating that heat, and you know, taking the advantage of the fact that you know how to play in the heat. I mean, that's something that TCU has over Butler. It's a heck of a lot hotter down here you just saw Peyton Cruz kind of breeze herself off with her hands right there before that corner is that corner goes to no avail right there is now Butler will look to move it up that's a great point Ashley brings up it's not nearly as hot in Indianapolis this time of year as this one sent back ahead there's Brandy Peterson though is the physical freshman right where she needs to be like she has been for a majority of 2018 thus far and today's an interesting opportunity Ashley this back line they haven't seen much adversity this year but obviously a, a bit of a step back against a really good opponent on Thursday it'll be interesting to see how they respond today in this match you know they just need to stay they need to stay balanced um, you know people might not get what I say when I say balance but the thing that you need with your defensive like with your defensive line is the fact that they balance well off each other the fact that you know, they know where one another is. There's a drill that the that defenders do during um, during warm-ups where, you know, there's a somebody goes up for a header. Well, that's part of the balance, too. So the girls, like, get in a formation as one person goes forward and, like, calls the ball. And it's not only teaching them, it's not only showing them, like, the ownership of, you know, you have to be demanding, but also how you have to balance off each other when somebody's off the line. Um, so it's just, it's doing that during the game and having those moments and really taking the time to know that you need to stay stay in tune with the three girls that are on your back line. Excuse me. Um, the three girls that are on your back line with you to really prosper and do well during a game. Yasmin Ryan just checked in at the last dead ball. 17 all Big 12 member comes in for Peyton Cruz. As Butler on the attack here. Nice crossover inside the 18. As they move it out to the middle, there's a bulldog there. And ooh, that did not look like a whole lot of fun right there. Is getting there and meeting at the point of attack with Haley Stelboski right there. I believe it was Cache Lou and Stelboski's down and she hurt her ankle on that one. And we're going to finally get a whistle. And I think we may actually have a couple of Bulldogs down on the play. Is Let's see, as I'm hearing him say get water, is it looked a little bit more than a cramp as you see that right there is that was Katie Soderstrom that took the shot right there, but inside the 18, 
And with Stelbowski, you see right there walking it off. She collided with Cache Lou, took the brunt of that one. There's going to be a foul on the back end, though, which will create a set piece here for Butler. I'd say uh, about 30 yards out here of Katie Lund. As Yasmin Ryan and Tara Smith will set up in front. As it will be Soderstrom that will take the free kick. Shot. Wide of the net is Katie Lund. Watch it goes by. It's a veteran play right there. Ash could have snagged that ball, but instead lets it roll over the end line and avoids the possible corner opportunity. I mean, that was one that she could have easily picked up. I don't think that would have been a situation of, oh, here, it's going out. Um, if I touch this, it's going to be a corner kick. I think that's more of a, okay, well, you know, it's easier for me to let it go out, and then my team can get can get resituated, push them up. Um, and then, you know, Katie's got a big foot, so she can just play the ball over, play the ball almost over the top from from her six-yard box. Uh, I think maybe not veteran is the word I would say, maybe just a smarter play to, like, not have her players, you know, wasting or exerting the energy off their legs. So Maddie Warren had it momentarily, now recollects. She'll give it over to Kayla Hill. Hill's got it. Shot with a left foot. She shoots. He scores. Hit that horn, Kayla. A terrific play right there, Ashley Hill. Very, very composed right there, settles it down and drills it with a left foot. Yeah, you know, you look down for one second and all of a sudden they've got a goal. Um, but this is a good play from the entire, from from Juarez coming in and then Hill seeing that she's got the shot and just taking the shot. You know, half of what, you know, half of what goal scoring opportunities is, is just, you know, pulling the trigger, you know, taking the shot, even if you, even if it's not on goal or even if you don't think it's going to, um, going to be what you need it to be, uh, you know, it's just taking that opportunity and creating that shot, but a good job from Juarez to get that ball into the inside, or from Smith to get the ball the in, to the inside and, you know, create that opportunity because she's stuck with the ball. Third of the year for Kayla Hill as it was actually Maddie Warren with the assist right okay. there. 20 on the assist. Her second of the year is Maddie Warren. She's just at the center of everything, folks, whether she's scoring, whether she's assisting, helping get the offensive attack going. The freshman just helps continue to produce. As it's the freshman and the senior right there. It's TCU on the board. And actually, we mentioned that first goal was important. A bounce back game for both teams right here. It's crucial to try to gain the momentum and try to keep it on your side as long as possible early on. I think if you can deflate, uh, if you can deflate Butler in the beginning, Beginning of the game and you really start getting on them and not take your t take your foot off the pedal then you have a really good opportunity the one thing that makes me worried about what I've seen so far with Butler is that they play transition soccer extremely well as soon as they win the ball they're putting TCU on their toes and transitioning into the into their attack um, there's no hesitation at all you know TCU kind of bounces the ball around whenever they win the ball but Butler goes straight at them and just lets them know that they're that they're there and ready to attack so it's making sure that you shut those down that's one more thing that makes this an intriguing match. It's kind of differing styles in this non-conference match, but you get a lot of look at Tiana Juracek, who just checked in. She came in for Tara Smith, the sophomore out of Serbia. She's taken a little bit of a different role this year, Ashley. She played each and every game on that back line last year. Now Eric Bell's told her to take a step back, be that main bench player. I think she's taking it in stride. Uh you know, sometimes that's what happens. You have you have your system, and at one point in time you might fit into the system, and then another point in time you might have a different role. But being a good leader is knowing that your role might change and accepting the role with grace. Um, I say that, and everyone probably is shaking their head, like, what am I talking about? Um, but accepting it with grace to know that, you know, if you're a leader on the team, whatever, whatever your team needs to do to win, you will accept it and you will be a part of it and you will keep pushing to make your teammates better every day. Nice defensive play by Butler to get that one out of there. I was talking with Lauren Saywitz, the director of operations, as you get a look right there. Nice defensive play from Morgan Klusterman. It's Mackenzie Oliver. We'll check in for the first time today. She'll come in from Messiah Bright. But I was talking with Lauren Saywitz. I'm talking to her. If there's one player on this team that can handle the transition and is a true leader that just wants to win his team. So that's one player on that back line for TCU. A true team player who's been really good this year. Second team all Big 12 last year. Hoping to win that first Big 12 title for TCU this year. She's got the ball right now, working around the defender here. Tiana getting after it there. Now is Shea Hubbard. 
comes up with Butler. Good job dispatching that one out. 1 0 our score. If you're just now joining us, you just missed Kayla Hill. Light the lamp to get this one going first. Goal in this one. 1 0 at TCU. Lead assist from Maddie Warren, third of the year. The senior from Highlands Ranch, Colorado. Really good to see her getting in the score sheet. She had a couple of tough games earlier this year, hitting the post as that one goes out of bounds. Goal kick for the Bulldogs. You get a look at Maddie Warren, second assist of the year on that goal. So Ludke move it over now. And Ashley, you've, you've talked about Butler, the transition offense. That's the way there's gonna attack. What are you seeing right now? How can they get more offensive moving forward in this? I just think if they keep attacking quickly like they're doing, um, you know, TCU's done a really good job of keeping Lou and Peterson back to make sure that they have somebody in the back. I mean, you can see Hubbard staying on the backside right now, um, and Lou's kind of hovering in the back to make sure that that transition off or offense isn't happening. This one's flipped up at Lucky right there, as I believe that was Maddie Warren right there inside the 18. I mean, she's dangerous from any angle right there. You see, fires that one on net, but Lucky up to the challenge as Butler mentioned final non-conference game for each of these teams, the Bulldogs. This one's today, the Bulldogs will open at Marquette. That's Friday night. Or probably next Sunday, I should say. They are off on Friday. TCU opens on Friday night with the Iowa State Cyclones at home. And so here come the Bulldogs with some room moving in. It's Paige Monet and Mike Herman. Watch the list. Remember this one. Shot Katie Lund, her first real opportunity of the afternoon as she saves this one. There's that one right there off the foot of Elena Gutlove, the sophomore at Canton, Ohio. And Ashley, you saw that play coming a long way away right there. There's that transition soccer. They can be dangerous when you give them space. I would have probably played that ball when they were still on the backside. If I, um, just because, you know, that, that whole side's been open. TC did not do a very good job of seeing that backside right there. Um, granted, in the long run, they pulled the right people back. Um, but that was, a good, that was a good look from Butler to see that the backside of the field was open at that point in time. Kenny Lund boots that one down to the other end as this one's played ahead. Coming up with it's Mackenzie Oliver. Mackey's got it. Wanted to get it over to Shea Hubbard. No, pardon me, Yasmin Ryan, I should say. Now Yaz has got it. Back to the goal here. Yaz looking to do some work here. All Big 12 member of her own. Nice defensive play right there. And it's Katie Soderstrom, the freshman out of Indiana. Three time first team all state member as this one's flipped into the 18 now. Headed out of there by. The Bulldogs, there's Thomas Starter. Nice physical play right there to come up with it. Now Shea Hubbard's gonna track it down. Hubbard, ooh, wanted to get it in, but a nice defensive play by Butler as it goes back to the middle of the field. Actually, you gotta like the pursuit on the offensive third from TCU early on. They're getting those 50-50 balls in the early portion of this game. They know that if they're losing the ball, they need to win it back. They also know that if they have possession of the ball, they're going to more, it's gonna be more likely their game. Um, so that's something that's promising and that you like seeing from TCU, the fact that they're just not stopping and they're they're staying on that offensive third. Um, I honestly think that they're really confident as a team with how high they play up with Katie in the back playing like they are. And I think that's really helping their helping their offensive attack is knowing that like that backside's kind of just or that defensive third's covered even though ten players on the team are on the other end of the field. Thomas Dodderell. Send it over to the top of your screen now. Now right back to Card, middle of the field. Now there's Juracek. I like the style of the TCU backline players. Juracek and Hubbard, very offensive early going here. As Ashley mentioned, just letting Cashay and Lou and Brandy Peterson do a lot of the work on the back end as Oliver sends this one across. And Mackey right there was hoping there was going to be a Horn Frog on the other end. Couldn't find her though. And actually, this is a huge weapon Eric Bell has now. Mackenzie Oliver, another player who has switched over to the bench. She's used to being a starter in her career. She brings high energy off the bench. It's a weapon that few teams in the Big 12 have, an offensive player like that coming off the bench. Eric made that comment about her last year too, because she was coming off the bench at one point in time. And yeah. he just said every time she comes on the field, she's a spark plug. Um, you know, it's like basketball. Sometimes your sixth man is your most important man on your team. Same thing with soccer. Um, sometimes your 12th and 13th man are some of your most important ones on the team because they come in and they create a different element of attack. They create a different element on the field that's just something that you you didn't have at the beginning of it. You didn't have or like teams aren't ready for it. They're used to seeing you playing one way and then you bring another person in and now the creativeness on the field is completely different. 
Ashley talking about how McKenzie has gone back and forth from the TCU bench. It's a situation she is familiar with as last year. Mackey, 14 starts out of the 22 games played. She took over that starting role in the middle of the year due to injury, and she really just never gave it back because of the energy she brought was so good in the Big 12 tournament. Battled through injuries in that one, was terrific in the postseason. As you see TCU getting more fresh bodies as they get in Danielle Eiley and Haley Malian into this one. As Maddie Warren getting a well-deserved break alongside the goal scorer, Kayla Hill and Caritas Tomastad. Didn't get a look at that third horn frog to check in, checked in there. When we spot that body, we'll get it to you. Natalie Heiser came in for Warren, so Heiser, Bright, come in and for Baylor, Celia Gaynor comes in for Stoboski, and then Anya Savage in for Gutlove, as this one's put on the back end by the Butler Bulldogs. As you mentioned, this group, a transition club that's going to pick their spots, have had one really good opportunity thus far. Also checking in the contest. As I think they actually got the number wrong. They said over the PA that it was Lawfrey. I believe that's Heiser, though. I think they... Nope, that is Cal Lawfrey. Pardon me, who asked. They did get Lawfrey into the contest. I think it was the other end. I think it was the stats that got it wrong. So, yeah, no Heiser. It's Lawfrey that checks into the contest right now. The senior at Alino Lakes, Minnesota. This one goes into Malian. Haley had it. This one's knifed away by the Bulldogs. Yasmin Ryan will move it over as TCU. Trying to mount an attack here for the early lead in this one. Been a big athletic weekend at TCU. Tough loss for the football team last night against Ohio State. We're still bitter about it. It's tough, but that's why Eric Bell's group out here trying to right the ship here on campus as they've got the early 1-0 lead in this one. Everyone's been talking about how big of a week it was for Gary Patterson's crew. It's been just as big of a week for Eric Bells. That top 10 matchup with Santa Clara. And then this one today, a really good home opportunity for the Frogs. Trying to get a big resume win early in this one. We look, Ashley, at this record early in the year as the one thing you want to do in conference, but the two things I should say, you want to challenge your group and you want to build your resume up a little bit. If TCU, even with the ranked uh, team they're playing today, you look at what they've already accomplished. Win over Alabama. You got a tie with SMU. 4 nothing win over Pittsburgh. A win over uh, Missouri on the road. You've already accomplished a lot in non-conference with one final block today you can knock down as well. The good thing is, is that they're playing against really good teams in the long run. Um, that's, half of, that's half of what it is when you need a bid into getting into NCAA. If you don't win, uh, if you don't win your conference, then at least you have, you can put it on, you can put it on your back or hang your hat on the fact that you've had a really good non-conference schedule and you played really good throughout the year. So having those wins and having, you know, even playing against Santa Clara and you losing, that's still a top 10 team you're expected to lose to, but you give them, you give them a really good game. So it's, you know, building the resume, as you said, um, to really, you know, have that push that if something happens in conference and it doesn't go the way you planned, at least you have that, that the, those games behind you to really say, you know, we deserve to be there too. I think Eric Bell and Ryan Hagenbaugh did a terrific job kind of putting this schedule together this year. A nice combination of high profile teams, nice challenges. And now you play in a competitive Big 12, very respected across the country. You don't have to do very much heavy lifting now. 500 probably gets you into the NCAA tournament, although this group has much higher aspirations this year. Third place finish last year. Ryan Hagen bought them one shy about it early in the year. He said this group intends on winning the Big 12 this year. So a long way to go. Haven't even started conference play yet. But as I said, you got to dream big in this one, especially to get to the places that this program is trying to go. As Anna Ludke will fire this one ahead. As someone who played here at TCU, it's really just makes me happy to see the fact that the team is doing as well as they do. The fact that they're becoming a winning culture. I mean, we tried so hard to create that when I was here, but not, we just didn't always have the right tools in place. And to see the team kind of coming together and finally being, um, 
which is finally being a team that you know people are recognizing as a, as a as a contender every year is awesome. As a substitution for the Bulldogs, Macy Miller checks into the contest for Paige Monahan, so one of the big threats for Butler off the field now as the Bulldogs try to get something going offensively. This crossover there is played on the top half of your screen and is forgetting the important part right there was Macy Miller. She left the ball behind. Thomas Daughter will track it down. Now the Frogs will recollect. Probably as Haley Malian, I should say, checked in for Thomas Daughter. There's Katie Lunn right back to Brandy Peterson. This one's laid over now. Brandy Peterson back over to Cash now. These two have been so good on the back line for TCU. The senior and the freshman, but you wouldn't really know who is who by the way they both have played this year. Peterson's been playing so well. I mentioned to Ashley, she just has the look of a junior or senior back there as a freshman. But you also can't dismay what Cache Lou has done, as that'll give me an opportunity. Uh, Belated opportunity to introduce you to Katie Lund, the TCU keeper in this one, the six-foot junior out of Dallas, Texas. She also a Mac Herman Trophy watch list member this year, 2017. First team, all Big 12s. Katie this year having another strong season for TCU as Lund comes in with a 3-0-1 record. 0.42 goals against average, only giving up a pair of goals to go along with 12 saves, 8.57 save percentage for Katie. Both those goals came in the SMU game in the first 20 minutes. So, other than the first 20 minutes of that ball game, Katie Lund's played a perfect slate so far in 2018. She's been so good. She's been on campus as this one's played ahead to Macy Miller. He's going to look to get something going towards the 18 here. Here comes Miller. Let's send it out front. Katie Lund, though, good job. Controls her six, comes out and gets it right there as Lund a good job snaring that one as we take a look right here at That's One thing that stands out about Katie Lund, she's an aggressive keeper, comes out and gets this one. Yeah, I mean, she did a really good job of making sure that another Butler player didn't get on the back end of that, but it was a really good job of Butler to get on the outside uh, and kind of go around the defense. Uh, they've struggled going through the middle, so they're finally figuring out that they need to go to the outsides if they're going to really have an opportunity because the defense is just really strong on the inside of the field. Um, I mean, it's what they it's what they want. They want the play. They want the other teams to be attacking from the outside. So they're doing a good job of at least keeping the middle really tight right now. And I think Butler's finally realizing if they want to attack, that's how they're going to have to do it. It was a good opportunity there as Mackenzie Oliver wanted to get in the middle now and hanging on to it was. And oh, no foul call right there. Looked like they bumped and tripped up Cowan Lawfrey. Now they'll go back to Anna Ludke who will. Flip this one out now. TCU, though, they're going to stay right on the attack here. Here comes Juracek. Tiana with it. Tiana wanted to flip that one in. Man, that's right outside the 18. I'd like to see Tiana put that on net right there instead. This one's played out top. Lawfrey trying to get to this one. Now, this one's played up the sideline here. Cache Lou is going to come up and try to help offensively here. It's TCU done a good job possessing here in the first half. There's Danielle Lyle, the East Carolina transfer. They're going to go back to Katie Lund. Re-rack this one. Lund back to Randy Peterson. For just now joining us, our goal is from Kayla Hill in the 21st minute. Maddie Warren on the assist. This one is... Played up, Yasmin Ryan's got it. Ryan wanted to play it in the middle. Now back out, Danielle Eiley's got it. Eiley has it. Now she'll go ahead and move it back to Brandy Peterson. Peterson will chip this one into the middle now. Yasmin Ryan with it. Yaz, get it over to Shaylin Hubbard. Hubbard's got it, she'll cross over as she leaves the butler defender in her wake. Gets it inside, Luff, shoot it in the middle. Frog is there, she shoots, save, rebound, shot, it's wide, wow. <laughs> What an opportunity for Haley Millian as they get the rebound. I, actually, I thought Daniel Eiley was going to bank this one right here as we watch Shaylin Hubbard 
lose the defender right there. These are two really good opportunities, point blank. Oh yeah, you know, I mean, Shayla, Shayla getting past the past the defense, and then the first shot, which was a really good shot, great save by the goalkeeper, but that second shot, which she's going to be kicking herself later for that one, the fact that it was just a little bit off uh, right on the outside of the post, but a great job by TCU to create a really good opportunity. It was actually Natalie Heiser who flipped that one out front, 23, not 25, and mixing those two up here in this first half. This one's played out of bounds as I think Tiana Juracek, I don't think she could believe she was that open. And sure enough, kicked it right at Anna Ludke, and then Malian was there, and she was looking for the second goal of her TCU career. Couldn't find it, though, and the score stays at 1-0. And Ashley, that is a huge turn of events right there for the Butler Bulldogs as you were right there on the verge of going down 2-0 on the doorstep of halftime. That's a big play right there. That's one of those where you give your goalkeeper an extra pat on the back uh, because she was very in tune with what was going on. She moved well across her line. And, you know, the, the second shot, you know, we've talked about it multiple times this season. The second shot is probably one of the most important ones because that can make or break it and cause a goal in the long run. Um, so, you know, that first shot that she saved was awesome and then a little bit of extra help from TCU missing. How difficult is it to control that rebound point blank right there? I mean, the chances of catching that ball clean are next to none almost. Just kind of got to get rid of it as best you can, I guess. I was a goalkeeper. I never had to really worry about that. I was more worried that they would get the shot off. Um, but, yeah, it's hard. It's hard to control the ball when it's ricocheting off something. It's got a weird spin on it. A lot of times the spin on the ball is like a, like an awkward like kind of half back spin. Um, that's like turning a little bit. Y'all can't see what I'm doing right now, but it's just turning kind of funny and the spin on it's weird. So it's really hard to control, especially if le your left foot's not your dominant foot. Uh, but yeah, the fact that she got a hold of it and almost had it in the back side of, back side of the goal was, was awesome. That's it. Potentially game-saving play by Hannah Ludke and Ned. We get a foul on TCU here. We'll give it back over. Do the Bulldogs. But once again, Ash, I think there's any way around that. I feel like TCU's controlled this first half, ball possession and by the score. Yeah, I mean, they've done a really good job of possessing the game um, and really taking control of the game. Um, one of the things that I was a little bit worried about, um, looking just kind of at the way Butler's played over the years, as well as how TCU plays in general. Uh, I was a little bit worried that Butler might have more of an attacking offense and play the ball a little bit more like TCU does, where they play it really quick and they bounce it off one another. Uh, so the fact that, you know, TCU's really shut down Butler in more than one way has been promising for what you might not see, what you're going to see for the second half, but as well as what you're going to see for the season when they play people like West Virginia. They play, like, they play, they play teams like the Longhorns and that kind of, in those kind of games. Butler with it on the offensive end. Nice move right there. Macy Miller gets it out front. Nice play by Brandi Peterson as she gets that one away. But it's going to be a corner kick for the Butler Bulldogs. Nice play by the freshman out of Atlanta. Macy Miller pushing the attack for the Bulldogs there. Miller, junior out of Carmel, Indiana. This is for the Indiana Fire Juniors, but she is not playing for Butler. Transfer out of Indiana as well. She got a little taste of the Big Ten before coming over to the Big East. As Morgan Klusterman will go to take the first corner of the contest for Butler as they look to find the equalizer here as we are closing in on Halftime intermission. This one's sent across the way. That one's way over the net. Miss hit right there from Klusterman. So break for TCU there. No opportunity for the Bulldogs. Be sure to stick around for our halftime show. We'll get you our Whataburger all access. Also catch you up with us in numbers. Highlights from this first half. It's been a good one so far. TCU a 1-0 lead. Katie Lund has had the answer to the two shots she has seen. Anna Lutke's had the answer for two of the three. Didn't have the answer for Kayla Hill, though, is... Katie Lund fires it at inside two minutes to go here in this first half. Frogs play this one ahead. It's now Natalie Heiser gets in the middle as they wanted to send it ahead to Mackey, but Butler, good job getting in front. All 
All right, Ashley, having lost 2 nothing on Thursday to the Baylor Bears, and then this first half really hasn't gone according to script, haven't got a ton going offensively. If you're Terry St. John and Rob Allman, are you just wanting to get to the locker room right now, and you've got 45 minutes to try to salvage this final game? Yeah, I think that, you know, Butler is one of those teams that can come out in the second half and really take it to you. Uh, it's almost like two different games when you're playing soccer. Like the first half, yeah, whatever happens. But once you go in that locker room, it's a whole nother game when you step out on the field. You've got 45 minutes, another 45 minutes to show what your game plan is to get the game back. Um, I mean, games are normally one. I mean, this sounds silly when I say it, but it's so true. Games are always one in the second half. Um, so the fact that, you know, they can get back, they can regroup, they can say, you know, we know it's hot out here, but they're playing in it too. Um, can really help this team. One thing you would have to play to TCU's advantage in the latter stages of the first and even the second half, the conditioning's got to play a role in this heat. You get towards the end of the first half, the girls that are playing in Indiana all year, they're not used to being in this 90 degree with the humidity. It's just another day at the office for TCU as they, we've been dealing with these 90 degree temperatures for the better part of this first month of the 2018 season is they'll get it back to Katie Lund and Lund will fire it ahead and bleed out a lot of the remainder of this clock. Yasmin yeah, Ryan will look to get one final attack going here. Here comes Yas. She into that one. No, she's going to be cut off by Leonard. And we're going to get a foul at the tail end of the first half. That's going to wind down the remainder of our first half. So Kayla Hill is our goal scorer for TCU. Her third of the year gives TCU a 1-0 lead over number 23 Butler as we head to the halftime break. Horn Frogs and the Bulldogs. It's been a good physical matchup so far. We'll bring you the highlights and our Whataburger All Access with our halftime show beginning next. It's Ford SUV season in California. See why more people return to Ford than any other brand. Here's a reason. We've got room. And here's another. Waze says it's faster to take the side streets. Perfect. Plus, Ford has won more J.D. Power Initial Quality Awards than any other brand. That's California smart. Get possible total savings over $7,600 with 0% APR on Explorer when financed through Ford Credit only at your Southern California Ford dealers. Hurry in today. Some Horn Frog fans enjoying a warm day here out at Garvey Rosenthal Stadium. TC with a 1 0 lead over the 23rd ranked Butler Bulldogs. Now it's time for you to enjoy our Whataburger All Access. Well, last season was a success. Um, very pleased with how we played for the most part and uh, had a lot of uh, exciting games and having the ability, the fortitude, uh, the mental toughness to fight through some fitness uh, fatigue and coming away with a, a victory in a lot of those games was awesome. And then having an opportunity to, to compete again in, in the Big 12 tournament and, and finish well in that and give ourselves a chance to compete for a championship and advancing to the NCAA tournament is always good. And, and so I, as we spoke to the group throughout the course of the season, it was more of all right, we don't want to be a one-hit wonder. It's my hope now that uh, it's, it's, it's no longer a goal, but it's an expectation to uh, to be playing in November and playing into deep November. We love playing at home, and obviously with the new surface and the new lighting makes it even a, a, a better place to play. But our fans are awesome, and this year we had the, the Rangers were really involved in, in, in setting the tone, and we also had the Fort Worth Hellfire setting the tone for cheers and chants and whatnot and making it more of a, a soccer environment. It is becoming a place to where it's very hard for other teams to come and compete and do well, and we look forward to making it more and more as the years go on, more of a, a, a tough place to play and more of a home field advantage for us to, to competing. The culture that we have is quite good. It's just a matter of a honing in on it and, and developing it and making sure that everyone understands what it is to be a TCU soccer player and uh, what the responsibilities are that go along with that and the expectations that go along with that. And I think that uh, we're, all, we're, we're, we're very close to getting it to where I ultimately want it to be. Indeed, a bright future for Eric Bell's soccer program. This team off to a strong start today. A 1-0 lead at the half over number 23, Butler. We bring you the numbers from that first stanza after this timeout right here on Fox. Check engine light just came on. 
Why? What's wrong? I don't know. It doesn't say. <laughs> if it doesn't say, how are we supposed to know what's wrong with the car? I have no idea. Oh, I'm gonna pull over and take a look. Now there's a way to instantly know what's wrong with your car when the check engine light goes on. Introducing Micromechanic. Micromechanic plugs into the special data port below your steering wheel. When your engine light goes on, Micromechanic sends a Bluetooth message to your phone telling you exactly what's wrong with your car. And if you're tired of getting taken advantage of by shady mechanic shops, the Micro Mechanic will not only tell you what's wrong with your car, but it will also tell you about how much the repair should cost. The Micro Mechanic could save you hundreds, or in some cases, thousands of dollars. And what if you're planning a trip and your engine light is on? Is it safe to travel? The Micro Mechanic can tell you that too. Check engine light just came on. Oh, let me check it. Just a faulty sensor. We're good. Every car should have a micro mechanic. And here's the best part. You can get a micro mechanic for just $19.95. But order now and you'll get two micro mechanics. Just pay a separate fee. It's perfect for a second car. And to make this offer even better, we'll also throw in free shipping. That's an incredible deal. Don't miss out. This is an amazing offer and is not available in any store. It also comes with a full ironclad money-back guarantee. To order, call now or go to the website, micromechanic.com. That's micromechanic.com. That's micromechanic.com. Back after the break. Sell your home with Purple Bricks. <laughs> I already sold my home. Purple Bricks has experienced local real estate agents that save you thousands. I could have saved thousands. Ah, commissary. The misery you feel when you pay too much in commission and get nothing more for your money. Whether you're buying or selling your home, save yourself from commissary at purplebricks.com. Back live in Fort Worth, one nothing. TC with a lead over number 23, Butler. Time to take a look at our highlights from that first half. And Ashley, TCU offensively got it going and a couple of players that have been doing it all year. This was such a good play. I mean, Warren really got in there and stuck with that ball. And then Kayla Hill just took the shot when she saw that when she saw that the goal, that the goal was pretty much wide open for her. Um, so a really good job of TCU to really just keep pushing and making things happen. And then I love this play. Hubbard just kind of shaking back on the girl you know you see that you've got somebody open on the inside take the shot recover that second shot's there the second shot's one of the most important shots in soccer because it's the one that you're most likely going to score off of come take a look at our numbers from that first half how we got to that one nothing score tcu did a good job controlling possession in the first half outshot butler 10 to 3 3 to 2 and shots on goal katie love lund made both the saves she needed hannah lucky with a pair of saves of her own four corners to one in favor of the frogs and each team with four fouls apiece in that first half you add it all up it is a one nothing tcu lead at the break when when we come back, we bring you the second 45 of this one. TCU and Butler fighting for a non-conference win. We bring you second half action after this timeout on Fox.
one nothing ball game at the half. TCU with a lead over 23rd ranked Butler. Before we get to second half action, time to take a look at our Big 12 standings. And Ashley, we take a look. A couple of surprises inside the Big 12 standings early on in the year. And the big one is at the bottom of the league. Look at West Virginia, 3-2-3. Three, three. That's a perennial top 10 program right there. I mean, they play really good teams um, in in the preseason. So, I mean, you can expect that from a, from a good team. Um, you know, half of what is going on in the standings right now doesn't mean anything when Commerce Play starts next week. So, I mean, yeah, you, you might be surprised. I mean, I like that Kansas is such a good team. Um, I know that's not somebody that we really hear about, but Kansas literally started their program like four years ago. So it's really cool to me to see that Kansas is doing so well, and they're not only that, but they're ranked on top of that, and TCU's in the mix up there with some really esteemed esteemed Big 12 programs. You look at the other one that stands out in the middle, Baylor as well, Paul Jobson's group being challenged in non-conference as well as TCU warming up here to begin second half play. As, take a look, right there, the Frogs, as the Big East standings now, as the Butler Bulldogs, we take a look, it's going to be a competitive league once again this year, Ashley, Georgetown atop the league at the moment. So, Georgetown is one of the best soccer programs in America. I uh, was looking to go to Georgetown for a while, too. They're such a good program, it's such a good school, um, you know, and all of these, all of these Big East teams, like, they all have really hard not only they all it's like TCU they have a really hard academic program as well as a really good um, a really good athletic program as well I mean the Big East is one that always has good soccer and Kyle it's raining there's a little bit of rain right now coming in to the Metroplex one thing in common with Georgetown Butler and TCU tuition ain't cheap Ashley any of those three schools is TCU getting ready to take the field here in the second half. one nothing lead here as the Frogs coming off the tough loss last Thursday to Santa Clara. Really good Santa Clara club, a good test for TCU. They have come out and responded nicely in the first half. The Butler Bulldogs, they're trying to avoid moving 0-3 on the year against the Big 12 as they already have losses against the Kansas Jayhawks on the road and the Baylor Bears on the road. Ashley, while well, I think Terry St. John and Rob Allman, their group's been getting challenged in these matches. They may think twice before scheduling these Big 12 teams next year. It's been kind of a rough go on the road. I mean, but if you schedule a Big 12 teams and you might win a game or two, Helps that RPI. goes to your RPI. There you go. So, <laughs> it's a double-edged sword, my friends. As we get ready for the second half, that gives us time to let you know about our crew out here doing a terrific job at Garvey today. Michaela Lewis is our producer back in the studio. Our director is Tyler Nelson. Michaela's double duty today, by the way. She's also our AD in this one as well. Trey Hilly is our technical director. Claire Lajing, she is our graphic op. Christian Bustler is our bug op. Meryl Posey is working EVS today. A one person band in there. Then Kate, Tony Simbanovich, joined by his daughter Katie, is the second engineer today. Andy Haskett is our audio one, joined by Danny Hacken on camera today. Kobe Schaefer, Stephen Neer. And Brandon Hathold and Tim Daly, four-man crew, I should say, doing all the heavy lifting out here at Garvey, our crew. Best in the Big 12, one of the best in the country for my money's worth. As this one is sit in now as TCU opens up play in the second half. And Ashley, if you're the Butler Bulldogs after struggling to get things going offensively in the first half, is that something you'd like to see if you're Terry St. John and Rob Allman? A little more transition soccer early in the half? You want to see transition soccer. You also want to see strong defense. Um, you kind of just want your team to come out of the come out of the locker room like the first half didn't happen. Um, and you go to the game plan and you see and you try to make it work this half. TCU picking up right where they left off as they control the possession right there, but Peyton Cruz loses it momentarily. By the way, a change in goal for Butler to begin the second half. It'll be Leone Daigie coming in as Daigie, the 5'6 sophomore out of Langenfeld, Germany, member of the German national team on the under 16, 17, and 19 team. I'm assuming she'll be on that under 20 team as well next year when she joins them and Ashley there it is there's a pedigree keeper right there very good player off the German national team yeah you know having these girls that come in and can play on a national stage is really beneficial for good programs um, you know their first keeper in the first half is really good so I'll be interested to see what kind of caliber this goalkeeper is can not compare in comparison but just how strong their their defense is with a new goalkeeper in you here's know the, me I'm not a platoon fan here's the question I have from a recruiting standpoint you know you think of the, the Germany's uh, the Mexico's those are those are your perennial soccer powers typically have good programs at the top are you watching them all the way down to the under 15 and under 16 and just keeping an eye because the bloodline's good there the kids they have I mean 
for women, um, you know, Mexico is a good one. Germany is a good one. The U.S. always has really yep. good teams. Um, you know, Brazil is another good one. I mean, but you want to watch the talent throughout the world. Like, yeah. that just, it, giving that stage gives you the opportunity to kind of see the talent throughout the entire, like, the generations and the generations to come of soccer players. Um, but, I mean, soccer for women is just... This was played out front right here. A nice play is I think we're gonna get a corner here for TCU. Good play. Continue that thought though, Ashley. But soccer for women is that that's the sport for us. So it works. And you know, you see it here, like the girls are just attacking the ball. Girls are um, you know, playing all all kinds of creative soccer, you know. It's something that worldwide you wanna watch, you wanna watch all the generations of women. Peyton Cruz will go ahead and play this one in. This is Kayla Hill right back to Peyton now. Peyton gonna wanted to fire it out front. Nice cross over there. Peyton flip it out front. This one knocked away though. Nice defensive play right there as it was Stoboski right there. The forward helping on the defensive end there. As now Isabel Juarez has it. Izzy looking to make a move here. Nice little cross over here. Juarez got it. Trying to stop on a dime there. Bumped off it momentarily. This was knocked away. She's got to go chase it down in the corner. She'll get there. Izzy knocks it off and it's going to be TCU ball. Good work. Juarez down there, the sophomore out of San Dimas, California, and this one's going to be out of bounds off Butler. It's going to go right back. Another TCU corner. Good early work in the second half by Peyton Cruz. Ash has created a couple of corner kicks. Yeah, you know, these girls have been really good at attacking the ball. Not only really good at attacking the ball, but they're really good at creating opportunities and making the corner kicks happen if they don't get the opportunity in the, to the net. Cruz fires this one out front. But this one's gonna hit the side of the net. A rare miss hit right there is that's one thing about TCU's game that's really stood out to me early in the season, Ashley. They've gotten a lot of quality opportunities off their set pieces from the corner. Yeah, I mean set pieces are, I mean, for a lack of a better term, free kicks for the most part. Yeah. I mean, they're ways to create opportunities that, you know, you worked for and you created something and you know, it's a it's a time for the game to kind of stop for a second. So then you can really have those have those moments to, you know, let something that you've written out on paper come to life. This one's played ahead off sides on the Bulldogs there. So back over to TCU now. As we get a look, give you one more time our officiating crew in this one. Marco Vega, the referee. Victor Perez, the assistant referee. Jack Ryan Feldman, the other assistant referee. Todd Wallace, the alternate official. TCU's own Jeff Smith is the timekeeper. And Max Potter is the scorer in this one. Let's get a look at Katie Lund out here for half number two. Her and Emily Alvarado have been kind of switching off in recent weeks over the road trip. Emily got starts at Missouri and Santa Clara. There's Kayla Hill. He'll want to get in for Smith. Tara's got to track this one down, though, and a nice defensive play there. On the back end, though, is stepping in was Morgan Klusterman to knock that one out. But it was Emily who got the start in the win at Missouri, 1-0 win in overtime before Katie got the shutout win and the 2-0 win at Arkansas Little Rock before seeding the net for Emily again on Thursday, who would fall will be the loser in the 3-0 decision against Santa Clara. And actually, that is a weapon TC has. I know you've spoken. You're not a fan of the platoon system, but the glass half full, they do have two quality keepers on campus. They feel very confident when either in net. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things. You, As long as you have those two goalkeepers, platooning's fine if that's what you pr or prefer, like playing every other game. Um, but it's good to know that you have those two girls that you can really count on to be strong, strong in the defense, um, to be like the backbone of the team. A lot of people don't realize it, but the goalkeeper is really the backbone of the team. You know, you have to organize, you have to stay in your game regardless of the team's back there. You have to be a support system whenever the team needs it. Um, and you also gotta kinda take it to them if they need a, if they need a, somebody to get on them. Messiah Bright fires it out to Maddie Warren out front. That one is sit wide of the net back over. To Butler, and one thing you mentioned earlier, Asher, that I think is so key in the goaltending situation for TCU is it's a mindset. And Katie Lund, she's been in this situation before. Freshman year, it was her and Courtney Hofer that were switching off back and forth before Katie finally got the starting job later in the year. Then last year, Emily comes on the scene, kind of the same thing. Katie once again takes the job in the middle of the year, and once again, it looks to be maybe trending towards that direction again this year. So it's got to be a positive. The TCU keeper has been in this situation before, and she really owns her six when she's in there as the Frogs are trying to move it back offensively here. Tara Smith with it. Give it over to Thomas Daughter. Wanted to get in the middle of the hill, but Butler does a good job moving it back ahead. 
Hawks in the middle. The Bulldogs recollect is now back ahead. They come. He's trying to track this one down for the Bulldogs. Gutlow. Lena Gutlow's got it. She'll move it back now. Send this into the 18. This one's knocked away, deflected. A Bulldog is there, but Brandy Peterson, right place, right time. She gets that one out of harm's way. Butler finally getting a little bit of possession inside the offensive third here. This one's flipped towards the net. There's a Bulldog there, but Katie Lund using every inch of that six foot one frame to come out and snare that one. As the junior, you see it. I think that right there is one thing that Katie, about Katie Lund's game that just stands out, Ashley. It's not only that she's aggressive, she controls her six each and every minute she's in there. She's confident. I mean, that was outside of the six. She controls her whole 18. Um, that's what you want on a goalkeeper. You want somebody who can command all 18 yards and can, you know, somebody used to tell me it's my, it's, it's your castle. So she commands and doesn't let people into her castle. That's going to be my metaphor for the day. Um, and really just takes it to him. Like she, she wants people to know that that's her box and she's confident. I mean, I, I love the fact that every time that Katie's in and we watch Katie play, she's just very confident. She's got a, she's got a very um, like solid demeanor when she's out there. Uh, and on top of that, I think her defense plays better when she's out there. Safe to say she's the queen of her castle, right? Katie Lund, all big 12 member Careful, last I year. That song. <laughs> it's, uh, and the one thing about Katie, she's really stepped her game up in Kansas City at the Big 12 tournament the last two years. Did it banged up as a freshman, and the last year was terrific as well. So hopefully for Eric Bell, he gets the best out of his keeper later in the year like he has the last two seasons. As Butler right now trying to find something to answer, Katie. This one's sit in, and there's Katie Lund one more time coming out and making a nice play inside the 18, getting a little dirty right there. So he beat Paige Monahan to the spot. Approaching 36 minutes remaining in this one. Kayla Hill is our goal scorer. Assistant from Maddie Warren. This one's sitting in the middle. There's Kayla Hill one more time with it. Kayla, shot, deflected. She scores! One more time for Kayla Hill. And the Frogs have a 2 nothing lead. Fourth of the year for Kayla Hill. Her second today and you see it right here Ashley give the senior a little bit of room and she'll make something happen I mean the beautiful first touch and a great shot I mean it just deflected right off the, the other player and popped up in the perfect spot to put it in the back of the net but I mean that was a good TCU offensive attack anyways I mean the ball that was played in was pretty much perfect it slipped right through the Butler defense to help create that opportunity for Kayla um, that's the kind of stuff that Eric and these guys and his team and his other coaches they draw they draw that kind of stuff up they practice that day in day out finding those seams Butler trying to get a counterattack going here so 2-0 now both goals from Kayla Hill as the Frogs looking for more ahead it's Maddie Warren onside Maddie shoots there's another one for good measure it's Maddie Warren bang bang it's 3-0 TCU Right there you see it, Ashley. Maddie Warren, she just uses her speed, lets the footwork do the rest, and it's 3-0 TCU. I mean, another great slip through the seam on there, and she just takes it and sees that backside and puts it on the backside, just right out of the goalkeepers. Goalkeepers, um, just the way their goalkeepers reach. Uh, you know, really good play from TCU. This is one of those things. Eric and his coaches are on the sideline saying, this is how we draw things up. This is how we play. And, you know, to be able to do it against a really good Butler squad is the way that you this is the way you want it. That is a pretty goal right there from number 20 right there. Brought it inside the 18, measured Leone Day and then just chipped it right over in that right corner. Maddie Warren, fifth goal of the season for Warren. So Kayla Hill ties her for the goals uh, lead on the team. That lasts all of about 30 seconds as Maddie Warren trots right down the field, picks up her fifth goal of the season as it's in the 55, 55th minute. And Ashley TCU now with 35 minutes to go finds themselves in complete control of this one. You know, like I say, don't ever take your foot off the pedal. It's 
So, I mean, TCU's just got to keep playing their game. If they can score six, seven goals, they need to do that today. They need to they need to come off the Santa Clara win or so that Santa Clara um, that Santa Clara loss and just really take it to this team. Um, you know, I'm not one for brutal brutal wins by any means, but if you can keep scoring, keep scoring. It's just seemed like a contest for TCU. They just want to take some frustrations out. You know, the first three weeks of the year, other than that 20 minutes against SMU, everything had gone the way the Frogs had planned. And all of a sudden, you have 90 tough minutes on Thursday. You really had not handled that yet. They have handled it well this afternoon as they have bounced back nicely this afternoon. A pair of goals from Kayla Hill and one from Matty Warren. TCU up 3-0 here. And this one's moved ahead now. Maddie Warren as this one's going to be stopped as I think we're going to get a foul call here. I think they're going to get it on Soderstrom. DC goals number 20, Maddie Warren, her fifth. Assisted by number 11, Messiah Bryant, along with Peyton Cruz. Time for the goal. So Maddie Warren, she just keeps on coming, folks. Goal against Missouri. Two more against Arkansas Little Rup. Picks one up today. And so you do the math. Five or four of the last six TCU goals have come off the foot of Maddie Warren. As Yasmin Ryan slams that one off of Anika Schmidt right there as this one's played back ahead. Now here comes Shea Hubbard with some room to work. Here comes Shea, chip it out. Backside Warren was there, but that one's headed out by the Bulldogs as they'll get that one out of harm's way. And as you just mentioned, I know you're liking this. The Frogs, they just keep on coming up 3-0. As Juarez has got it, Izzy now going to stop, move it back now to Thomas. Akari's got some room to work here. Let's see what she wants to do. Chip it in. Here comes Bright. Messiah, header. There's another one. Messiah Bright. This one right here, it's all Caritas Thomas' daughter. She sets Messiah Bright up great here at the 18, and the Frog freshman does the rest. Butler's kind of gassed right now. You can tell they're just not attacking the ball. They're not. They're giving those players spaces. But a beautiful, beautiful ball just put in the right place, and then Messiah gets in there. I mean, that's one of the things I love about watching Messiah Bright is the fact that she's not scared to put her body out there, and she's physical. So she's going to get up there and make those plays. If you, get, if you put the ball up there for her, she's going to try to get on the back end of it but you can tell now this is one of those situations where Butler is now gassed because they've had a solid 10 almost 15 minutes of TCU just attacking them and you know TCU is really taking it to them um, and the heat's gonna get to them at this point in time too one goal for TCU in the first 53 minutes they've scored three in the last two minutes and 57 seconds to turn a one nothing game into a four nothing game and here's my question for you Ashley Terry St. Job and Rod Ballman you bring up the heat Already lost 2 nothing on Thursday, down 4 nothing now. At what point do you put the white flag up and go ahead and get ready for Big East play here with 30 minutes to go? I mean, that would make them bad coaches if they put up the white flag. Uh, I mean, you want you want these coaches to try to find a way to at least get a couple on the board. I mean, if you have to change up your system, then you have to change up your system. If you've got to play with four in the back and five in the midfield and one up top to keep, it, to keep the damage low, then that's what you have to do. Um, you know... Let me rephrase real quick. Would you maybe start playing some younger players as, as this one goes on? The, the heat and everything playing in, you know, you start getting a TCU, already a good defensive squad. Finding a couple of goals on the Frogs is tough. Finding four of them, that's a really, really tall hill to climb. I mean, one of the good things is that, you know, a player can come off and then come back on. Yeah. So for now, why not just play a couple of players that you haven't played so far? Give them the minutes, give them the game conditioning. I mean, there's two girls already sitting on the sideline ready to come in for Butler. Um, you know, kind of switching out some of those players. You've had two, you've had two games now in the heat of Texas in uh, in September you're you're about to start Big East play it'll you'll never have a hot game again you're more likely to go cold so give them the conditioning now and give them the opportunity to get out there and play and see maybe you have somebody who gives you something that you weren't expecting or is a spark plug that you weren't expecting I'll say this maybe Terry St. John and Rob Allman, you can keep scheduling inside the Big 12. Just quit scheduling inside Texas this time of year. This is rough for the girls from Indiana. They're not used to this. 
As we've been playing in 90 degree weather all day with humidity. As now here's Messiah Bright looking for another one. Bright sheds a defender. Looking for number five. Saved away by Daggy. Here comes Kayla Hill. Looking for the hat trick. She puts it on. There's the hat trick for Kayla Hill. Her third of the afternoon. And TCU is up 5 0. The floodgates are open, Ashley. As TCU now another goal, and you're starting to see the scoring depth of this group. I mean, the one thing that I keep telling you is that second shot. You know, Messiah gets the first shot off, goalkeeper's out of position. Kayla comes in for the second shot outside the box. You see the, she sees the goalkeeper's kind of out of position. She's going backwards. You see in that in that replay that the keeper is going backwards. So you have a more likely chance to shoot and score. And Kayla gets the hat trick off of it. I mean, fantastic job of TCU's defense. Butler, you can tell, is frustrated on the backside right now. Um, you know, you see their three, their, you see their three defenders kind of just in frustration. The fact that, you know, they keep, that TCU keeps finding those seams and they're breaking down. Um, it's one of those things. It's how do you, as a team, as a team in this kind of situation, in this adverse situation, you have to figure out how to really come back from it and really in the middle of the game, change the way that you're playing. I'll tell you this, our main man, Luke Anderson, over at Horn Frog TV is going to have a long highlight to cut later. <laughs> TCU is just filling up the scores sheet here in the second half. Kayla Hill, goal number five. She's got the hat trick today, folks. As she scored the first goal for the Frogs, the second goal, and now the fifth goal as TCU really putting it on the Butler Bulldogs here in this second half. And Ashley Wilde. People in attendance have no problem with seeing it. Part of you feels for Butler playing in this heat. They're just trying to keep on grinding. But as you said, they're playing on dead legs here. You can tell. Yeah, I mean, it's, they're they're having some problems right now. They're they're breaking down. They're not a, they're not communicating with one another. They're kind of. I mean, I don't want to say walking, but at the same time, like you can tell that they're tired out there because you know when you should be when you're wanting to sprint to that ball or when you need to. Make Make up that extra that extra two feet you know this is when your legs really have that problem it's a Sunday game too they're ugly and for them this has gotten ugly by the way in case you were wondering at home Butler had not allowed more than two goals in a game all year and we mentioned they have played a challenging schedule number 20 Notre Dame number 19 Kansas coming off a matchup with Baylor this one's sent across and a whistle here as get a foul call here let's see what it's gonna be I think we make it a PK here it's one of those moments yep. that I tell you about Kyle we don't make yep. mistakes in the back in the in the defensive third especially in the box so a penalty kick here for Butler as to take it as we take a look at the penalty here, I think they're going to get Izzy Juarez. Yep, they're going to say that hey, that's tough, too, because I don't think she's getting to that ball anyways. But with a 5 nothing lead, not too much stress here as it'll be Annika Schmidt to take this one on Katie Lund. Try to get the Bulldogs on the scoreboard. Schmidt shoots. She scores. The Bulldogs are on the board. It's Annika Schmidt with a goal and that'll make it five to one that's schmidt's first of the year she's 2017 all biggies first team member and ashley comes in and cashes in yeah i mean pks are meant for the opportunity for another team to score um katie katie Lund did a good job of figuring out which way she was going and trying to get there but that was a good placement um that was good placement of where the ball was going to go um those are hard balls to save they're not impossible but they're hard um, but that's when you get onto your defense when they're in the back or you get onto your girls and then when they're in the back and you say we don't do this We do this now. We're gonna do it in another game. That's more important And it's going to end up costing us the game. So we have to we have to fix this now We don't make these kind of mistakes back here You can make them all you want in the midfield You can make them all you want in the in the offensive third, but you do not make them in the defensive third so, as I said the uh Kind of a tough break for the Frogs. It didn't look like that pass was going to be connected anyways, but as I mentioned, a little bit too much contact from Juarez leads to the foul inside the box. And one thing to bring up, actually, 
When, when we look at TCU, we're in game number nine, and they see their first time that they surrender a foul inside the box. Obviously, that's something you never want to do, but we've got a pretty good way into the season having seen TCU play pretty disciplined inside the 18. I mean, you want you want that from your team, but one breakdown can cause more. Um, I guess I'm kind of pessimistic when I say that, but I'm also I'm also a goalkeeper, so I look at it as we don't start creating bad habits now. Yeah. Um, so we start doing this now when we're winning five to zero. We're going to do this when we're tied zero zero, and we do not let that happen. Um, granted, I don't think in a situation where it's zero zero, a ref's going to call that, but there's always a chance that he will. TCU trying to get that goal back here. This one's stolen away. Inside 28 to go. It's been a flurry of goals in this second half. TCU with four of them as Kayla Hill has got a couple. One from Natalie Heiser. One from Messiah Bright. TCU substitution is returning to the match. Number 23, Natalie Heiser. For number 20, Patty Warren. As Frogs play this one back ahead or try to. Now Butler recollects. Sent back now as the Bulldogs play it ahead. Played back now, Peterson. Get it back to Katie Lund. We'll look to play it back at. Also misspoke, I believe our stat board has it wrong. It's actually Maddie Warren with her fifth goal of the year. Natalie Heiser not on the score sheet today, although Natalie's put in good minutes. While she's been on the field, as is Cowan Lawfrey pictured right there. Lawfrey, senior who, one of the leaders on this group, leads by example on and off the field as this one's sent in now as Danielle Eiley has a flip that one ahead. Bulldogs will now send it back. Eiley checks in for Thomas Stoddard as Tiana Juracek also when she comes in for Tara Smith is now the Bulldogs trying to move this one ahead now. Yasmin Ryan moves it ahead now as Yaz has some room to work. Thought about passing it, she's going to take it herself. Yaz with it now, she'll pass it over now. Juracek, Tiana stops it. Trying to flip it out front. Juracek, out front. Wrong on the back end, it's Mackenzie Oliver. Oh, I think they're going to say she's offside. Yes, she is. Wipe that one away. And as Tiana Juracek can do nothing but smile right there. Mackie <laughs> gives her a hug. She snuck in on the back end. And she snuck past us, Ashley, because I couldn't tell at the moment. A bang-bang play, but offside by a step. And now the Frogs will collect it back. So TCU putting in the back of the net a lot today. As now Ryan gets it in the middle. Now to Natalie Heiser. Heiser to Hill. Hill wanted to go to Juracek. That one's stolen away, though. Nice defensive play right there. Stepping in the middle was Klusterman. Lawfrey will deposit to the back line and Shea Hubbard. Pardon me, I was catching Lou, I should say, as they move this one over now. It's Isabel Juarez. Juarez is going to chip this one in, let Mackey run for it. Here comes Oliver with Heiser breaking to the middle. Mack, send it out front. Davey with a nice diving stop right there. That gets a round of applause from Ashley Bullington. Next to me, that's a terrific play, full extension from the Butler keeper right there. I love plays like this. Um, you kind of have to extend your goalkeeper a little bit, but good job of TC getting in there. And, you know, after that last one, I don't think she's going to be able to let the ball go across the goal anymore. So she's coming out and starting to play that six up at the top of the six and putting her body on the line because you don't. Now it's controlling. Um, it's, you know, you've had four goals in this half and you just don't want any more. So it's a pride thing. So if you have to come out there and you've got to put your body on the line, you're going to because you don't. I mean, th there's no one else between the, the goal and you. Looks more like something we see on a college football Saturday, but Leone Daigie laying out, making a nice play. This is a college football Sunday. Exactly. Football. It was an exciting day of football yesterday, and we have an exciting afternoon of soccer today as TCU has been very offensive as Ryan sends it out front. Nice play there as the goal scorer for the Bulldogs, Annika Schmidt, gets it out of there. And a handball there on Danielle Eiley, and she's knocked to the ground. Butler's going to try to run with this one. 
I think Brandy Peterson's got other ideas. Yeah, she'll get that one. out of bounds. Peterson, the freshman out of Atlanta, Georgia. First team all region at Chapel Hill High School. Terrific prep player, and she has carried it over here to TCU. Is now Peyton Cruz will check back into the contest, and we may have seen the last of Kayla Hill today. 14th hat trick in TCU history. And she'll get a high five from both Eric Bell and Ryan Higginbotham and Tom Saratone right there. As the staff has got to be very happy with the performance they got out of their senior today. And actually, we discussed it during the SMU game. Kayla Hill is the epitome of the senior that leads by example. Yeah, I mean, that's the kind of girls that you want on your team. You, you There's different kinds of leadership. There's the girls that are very vocal. Um, there's the girls that bring a lot of energy that you go to for leadership. And then there's the girls that lead by example. And Kayla's been one of those girls for the past four years who's worked really hard and led through example because of it. That's one thing that's been a constant with TCU over these last three years in the two NCAA tournaments. This one's inside the 18. Butler with an opportunity here as they'll flip this one over towards Katie Lund. That'll go wide of the net. But you go back to that 16 team, the one that clinched the first NCAA tournament appearance. You have players like Michelle Prokov, Lauren Saywich, who's now on the staff, Megan Murphy, Courtney Forte. So many seniors that have played important soccer that led by example. Then last year, Emma Heckendorn was a great example, along with Allison Ganter. And Ryan Williams, those three, they really did the same. And now this year, Kayla Hill, Mackenzie Oliver, really just providing that leadership. Can't forget about Cash A. Lou, though, as Cash, the safety blanket on that back line. Is Ashley. That's one thing that's got to be pointed out, is we've talked about how the TC back line's been much more offensive this year in previous years. Brandy Peterson and Izzy Juarez have led the attack of the a lot of time. If you don't have the senior in Cache Lou in the middle right there, kind of shoring things up, I don't know if you quite have the same kind of offensive attitude, but you know that she's back there waiting defensively. I like the fact that she's kind of an anchor. Um, yep. When you look at the defense, she's definitely an anchor of it. She is the person that, you know, I, I had a sweeper growing up. Yep. Her name was Samantha Wolf, and I loved having her in front of me because I knew that, you know, if something was happening and something was going on, my back was covered. Not only that, but one of the top players, one of the top players in DFW is playing in front of me. I feel like that's kind of the same way with Cashet Lou. It's like, okay, I'm comfortable because I know that if I come out of the box, like my back's covered. Um, not only that, but she's she's just a really smart player. I mean, you can see when she starts backing up to to start um, to defend and when she's attacking. Here comes Peyton Cruz looking for number six. Peyton sends it out front, but a nice defensive play by Butler to get that one out of harm's way. Is now Yasmin Ryan's going to look to tee this one up from distance. That one's blocked away. That was Yaz. I think she wanted to try to go up top with that one. And we're going to get a foul call here. I think they're going to get it on Danielle Eiley. And just extending that thought, Ashley talking about Cashy Lou, how strong she's been on the back line. Mentioned the leadership roles. TC, they have had a terrific anchor as a senior on that back line each of the last three years. First, it was Lauren Saywich on that inaugural NCAA tournament team. She kind of handed the baton over to Ryan Williams. Now she's handed it to Cashy Lou. They've all just done such a good job. Big reason TCU's been one of the best defensive teams, not only in the Big 12, the entire country the last couple of years. And they have really continued that so far this year as we're in game number nine. They have given up a total of six goals. Goal kick for the Frogs. It's been a busy weekend in TCU athletics. Jill Kramer's crew, the TCU volleyball, to stay home as they were had a tournament canceled due to Hurricane Florence. Picked up a sweep of North Dakota State on Friday. Then Gary Patterson's crew. Got to give a shout-out to them. How hard they fought last night at AT&T Stadium for four quarters. Just short in that one. It was a really fun ball game to be a part of and see. And then today, Eric Bell's crew looking to cap the TCU Athletic Weekend in style. As right now, they lead it 5-1. to one. As they'll send it back. Leonie Daigie now. Got a feel for Daigie. She has just been peppered here in the second half. 
Yeah. You know, Kyle, back to your point about TCU Athletics this weekend. TCU Athletics as a whole, like, I don't think a lot of people really understand how good all the programs are here. I mean, our tennis team is really good. Our equestrian Final Four squad good. two years ago with mm -hmm. Dave Roditi's group. And not only that, but, like, our our um, rifle team is always really good, too. Like, the uh, just the sports that people wouldn't expect that TCU even has. Um, our swimming team is always competing. It's just, it's one of those things, like, all around the board, TCU's got solid programs. And just the, the fact now that you know our volleyball team our basketball team our women's soccer team um you know our men's basketball team are all really coming together and creating creating an atmosphere for athletics that people around the country are thinking of tcu as an athletic school not just a football school or a ba baseball school it's all started at the top as natalie heiser is going to move this one into the 18 not give it out to yasmine ryan yeah he's going to shoot it from distance i'm going to go up and over the net. And you got to give credit where credit is due. The departed now, Crystal Conte down in Austin, did a phenomenal job in his decade plus here on campus in Fort Worth. And on top of that, Jeremiah Donati's done a terrific job since taking over as the athletic director. He'd be the first to tell you that Chris got it in a good place and now he's running with it. And now the key is to keep these coaches that they've, they've kind of gotten on campus. And really two years ago when TCU got that inaugural NCAA tournament bid as the Frogs trying to get something going offensively, Bulldogs Thornton that away. You could tell the emotion when Chris was still on campus about how much it meant to him that Eric had finally knocked that door down, was almost in tears. And then talking to Jeremiah Donati about the soccer program, how important it's become. And the thing is, what you got to remember, like I said, Ashley, this isn't one of the money makers, but it's no less important than football, basketball, baseball. The emphasis is campus wide now at TCU. As Isabel Juarez sends this one in, a couple of frogs there. Ooh, Juracek's down. Ooh, she got stepped on right there to Tiana. And we may get a PK here on a penalty. Yeah, we're, I think we're going to as Tiana's down on the play, though. And that right there is not good for TCU as Juracek got stepped on there by the player coming down. Is Now Trisha Jamis is going to come out and check on Tiana as we take a look here. Ashley, it should be a penalty kick right there as Tiana got knocked to the ground. And, oh, the player coming down right on her right there, I believe. Was that Annika Schmidt? I think it was 27. An inadvertent player right there, and Ashley, that's never fun with those metal cleats. Uh, definitely not. I don't think anybody's wearing metal today. No, no metal cleats. Okay. Well, no, you can wear metal cleats, so you're just more likely to wear them when it rains. Okay. Um, you know, those are studs, so you're going to more likely wear your, just like your plastic ones today because it's kind of dry outside uh, and the grass isn't super wet. Still not fun. But it's not <laughs> fun regardless. Um, you know, that's just one of those plays where people get a little bit, like, topped up with each other and mixed up. And, you know, a TCU player got the run, the deal of that one. Um, I don't think anything was malice or malicious by any means. But, yeah, I mean, to me... That, that stings for Juracek. That's, that's going to be a tough loss if he, she ends up being hurt. TCU already working without the services of Ariana Owens on that back line. She's out indefinitely with a lower body injury. And I would think, I don't want to speculate, Ashley, I did not go to school to get an MD, but it looked like with her being stepped on, hopefully that would be, you know, like a cut or like a... Uh, Cosmetic wouldn't be the word, but hopefully nothing inside the bone or inside the ligament you would we'll hope. Once again, on that way. Yeah, as we're going to go ahead and take a timeout, though, as they take care of Tiana. 5-1 our score. TC with a lead over 23rd rank. Butler, we bring you the rest of the second half after this timeout. Here's how Old Dominion puts together a winning performance. It takes precision, like how we're number one in claims prevention. It takes hustle, like our over 99% on time rate. And it takes consistently going the distance to earn our fans' loyalty. That's why we're number one in customer satisfaction. Old Dominion, official freight carrier of Major League Baseball. It's Ford SUV season in California. See why more people return to Ford than any other brand. Here's a reason. We've got room. And here's another. Way says it's faster to take the side streets. Perfect. Plus, Ford has won more J.D. Power Initial Quality Awards than any other brand. That's California smart. Get possible total savings over $7,600 with 0% APR on Explorer when financed through Ford Credit only at your Southern California Ford dealers. Hurry in today. Tiana Juracek able to walk off on her own power, so some good news there for the sophomore out of Serbia. As we're going to get a penalty kick for TCU here. Cache Luke looking for the sixth goal of the day. Cash, 
money. It's Cashay Lou with a sixth goal of the day for TCU and possibly the exclamation mark. Ashley, I like the look. Let the back line player up, get a little offensive here in the 5-1 game as it's Cashay Lou, normally the defensive player. She's offensive this time though. That's what I was thinking exactly when she was when she was standing at the line. Um, you know, why not give the senior the opportunity to score? Um, you know, I will be honest with you guys, defensive players and goalkeepers have great shots and nobody realizes it. Um, so, I mean, good good, good placement on Lou. Um, I like to see that they let the senior get one in um, on, on her senior season. A lot of the times defensive players, especially center meds, don't get those opportunities unless it's on a free kick or a, um, a corner kick, so. First career goal of Cache Lou's career comes in her 52nd ball game as a TCU Horn Frog. And she deposits the penalty kick into the back of the net. As now Butler will get an opportunity of their own, trailing six to one. This one's fired out front, couple of Bulldogs there. This one stopped down, no shot. Gonna go wide of the net. And back over to TCU on the goal kick is... We're gonna get a substitution. I think they're gonna go to a third keeper of the match is Terry St. John and Rob Allman. As it'll be Stephanie Rodriguez, the 5'6 sophomore out of Batavia, Illinois. And Ashley, I know it's just one contest, but is the thought process here, you don't want to mentally lose Leone Daigie, you give up a fourth or fifth goal in one half, or is something else maybe the thought process I here? I think you go to the, the, okay, she's just, she's getting it hammered to her. Let's put the, let's put the new girl in. Uh, she doesn't get a lot of time. So, you know, either, and kind of see what she's made of. If TCU keeps attacking them like they do, she's going to get a lot, a lot of opportunities. And yeah, if they rack up more goals, then so be it. You've already, like, this game's already out of hand as it is. So, why not give your goalkeeper the chance to really see what she can do? All right, Ashley, I got to ask you here. You give up five goals in the second half, and this is a player who plays a lot. She's their second half keeper. How does that affect your mentality moving forward? Does it at all? I mean, you, as an athlete, you can't let it happen. I mean, I know I say that, and it does. Um, but, you know, a prime example, I have a friend, professional baseball player, you know, and he got hammered the other night. And but he couldn't let it he couldn't let it affect him. It's the same thing here. Like you just can't let it affect you because if you do, it's always going to be in the back of your mind. So then you're start second guessing yourself, and you just can't let that happen. I mean, one of my biggest problems in college, which is probably why I was never a starting goalkeeper. I mean, four four. I'm undefeated still. So. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I would let things get to me and I'd let them eat at me. And that mindset of you know what I'm the best there is, and every time I walk on the field, I'm going to prove it. Um, so it's making sure that you keep that mentality and knowing that, you know, sometimes you just have off games. TCU keeping that attacking mentality here as Izzy Juarez has got it now. Juarez will move it over now as the Frogs. They want some more, I think. This was played in. Rodriguez will come to Okay, we have the mindset of the keeper, Ashley, moving forward. If you're Terry St. John and Rob Allman, what's the message to your team after this? Is just wipe that 90 away and forget all about it? Yeah, I mean, it, you take it as like a learning. You take it as learning. So what happened? Where did we break down? Where was the defensive errors that we had? And how do we fix it? Um, you know, you have to take it as a learning, a learning thing. Failure is the best way to succeed sometimes. You know, if you win all the time, you don't learn what what your team needs to work on. So the fact that, you know, they're losing, but they're and they're losing the way they're losing is good for them because they can look at it and be like, okay, well, it's not perfect yet. So let's do this, this, and this and see if we can make it perfect. They got a lot of film to break down today as it has been a rough one for the girls out of the Big East. As really, it's been a road trip to forget for Butler. A 2 nothing loss to Baylor on Thursday, although obviously that one a much tighter contest. And then today, they really just haven't been able to get things going, and it's really started offensively, Ashley. You know, in that first half, it was only a one-nothing game at the end of the half, but you just felt TSU starting to wear this group down, ball possession with the heat, and it's really shown here in the second half. After that second goal, um, so early in that second half, in the second half, you saw Butler kind of just deflate. Um, they were walking to the ball. They weren't sprinting. They, the defense was breaking down, and they weren't trying to recover as quickly. Um, players weren't getting covered. Uh, it's that kind of stuff that you know TC is really capitalized on to show. You know, we're not here. To, we're not here to just tie it. We're not here to kind of win. We're here to dominate. 
And the good news for Butler is they'll get a little extra time to prepare. No Friday game next week. They'll have a full week to get ready for their road contest at Marquette before they return home for home Big East matchups with Seton Hall and Providence. TCU, they're going to hit the ground running in conference plays. You have Iowa State to open up on Friday. And then West Virginia on Sunday. And actually, that matchup has been a fun one in recent years. The Mountaineers, they've always got a really, really good squad. But TCU, they've played up to them the last couple of years, not only in Morgantown and Fort, but also at the Big 12 tournament in Kansas City. Yeah, I mean, you want to play teams like West Virginia and do really well and have the opportunity to win. The better you can compete against a, a top program like that, the better off you are in the long run. And the fact that they're coming here and... Oliver sends it out front, and Rodriguez has the answer. She knocks that one away, and it'll give TCU a corner as, man, the Bulldogs is trying to get to the finish line here. This one has been a tough second half. TCU has just kept on coming, and they're showing no signs of letting up any time outside of the full 90 here as Peyton Cruz will come out for the corner here as TCU looking for lucky number seven here. In this Sunday matinee matchup, they are closing out non-conference with a bang here. As they've got Haley Malian set up next to Stephanie Rodriguez. There's a hand on her hip. Here comes Cruz, flips it in now. A couple of frogs coming in. Sullivan was there. Now out to Oliver. Mackey, ooh, kicks it out. I think I'll hit her right in the face right there. Instead, that's going to go back over. Now, I think it's a handball. I thought that hit Mackey. Right? I guess, actually, Ashley Bullen says she got a better look than I did right there. It was off the hand of Oliver, so as this one's played back ahead by Butler. You got to be careful with how high you kick the ball. So if it goes past a certain point on a player, you're going to call for a high kick. Be kind of similar to like a high stick in hockey. Can't play it above the post. So. Okay, real quick, since we're since we're kind of talking about different things, did anybody see those all tons? Oh, the goal, goal last night was incredible. The 500th goal. I've never number seen one, a, number I've one on Never Sports seen Center. a shot like that in my entire life. Like that outdid bicycle kick. That outdid crazy header. Like that was ridiculous. Amazing. I looked at that Man. this morning and I was like, this is sorcery. If you haven't had a chance to check it out, go on Twitter. It's, pre it's pretty incredible. The goal last night, 500th of his career. And that's what makes it cool to me, Ashley. Not only was that an amazing goal, you do that for your 500th. Like, talk about do it in style. He's one of those players. I just, I remember somebody was telling me about it. He's just one of those players. He's always been so good. And not enough people in the U.S. know about him. Well, now everyone knows about Salton. One thing that I've always thought is so cool about male soccer players, this was played in the middle right there. Katie Lund bats it up. And now Whitney Sullivan's going to have to get that out. These guys are so good. They don't even use their, they either use, they're just their first or their last name. They use one name only. They don't even use the full name. Messy. I know, right? It's, it's, it's much more assertive than using the full name. Is. Haley. I know, right? As this one's going to be controlled by the Bulldogs now. Nine and a half to go in this one. TCU has completely controlled this one, although it's really been in the second half. Butler played neck and neck with the Frogs, while the Frogs controlled the offensive possession. It was only a one nothing game at the half. Man, TCU has opened the floodgates here in the second half. As our goal scores, was the first half goal was from Kayla Hill, and she has gotten back into the act in the second half as she picked up the second goal as well. The third one from Maddie Warren, the fourth from Messiah Bright on the header, and Kayla Hill with the hat trick, because this one's flipped up over the net. The lone goal for Butler to make it 5-1 to one was Annika Schmidt, and then Cache Lou answered it with a PK goal of her own in the 73rd minute, first goal of her TCU career. Tatum Condry is going to come into the contest now. Good to see the freshman get some run here. She'll come in for Izzy Juarez, and Ashley, this is always the positive of a blowout win at home. You get to empty that bench, get some kids some opportunities. Yeah, you want to you want to give these girls opportunities to play. You never know when something's going to happen. You're going to need them, so give them opportunities now. So in those high pressure situations, they aren't in shock walking out on the field. Such, on the field. such a great point. The moment that happened last year happened to be in Morgantown, West Virginia, when Ryan Williams went down. Lucky Izzy Juarez was ready to step up, did a good job on the back line. So it's a great point to bring up. TCU very deep. They have multiple players at each position. And Tatum Condry, she's the one freshman that hasn't gotten a ton of playing time this year, but she's also a very, very good player. Ryan Higginbotham spoke about her, but 
kind of the nature of the beast for playing for TCU right now. There's only so many spots to play, and there's so many good players on this roster right now. It's a good, it's a good problem to have. I love that this class is ranked, too. I mean, TCU doesn't really ever get ranked classes, so it's cool that these girls are getting the opportunity, and they're really making an impact. An NCAA tournament that does a lot for a recruiting pitch is Tatum Condry. to look to cross over here and make a move. Condry, and that's going to create a corner right there. That's a nice play by Condry. But hang on, let's see. Are they going to call a foul first? You say yeah, they're that. They're going to call a foul. You say that, but what's interesting is, is with soccer at least, we start recruiting eighth, ninth, tenth grade. So a lot of these girls were already committed here and they believed yep. in the program before they started winning um i mean they were winning but like before they had started going to the ncaa tournament they they saw the way that eric coached and they saw the way that ryan higginbotham coached and um you know that's what sold them on the team they saw the way the camaraderie was between the girls and the facilities which are absolutely some of the best in the country for women's soccer um the, you know it was those factors not the fact that they were went going to the ncaa tournament by any means it was the fact of they believe in what we're selling here for this program i'm gonna draw another parallel here ask you the college football side of things you look at all the head coaching jobs that are being uh, attained over the last few years by co guys that have been career coordinators guys like cliff king Bear kingsbury chad morris uh, art bryles did it at baylor is it kind of the same thing in soccer eric bell had so much success at florida state a national top five program has competed in multiple ncaa tournaments been a national champion how much does that weigh into this he knows what success is made of and now he's building it here definitely i mean eric eric's the team and the girls that eric eric recruited won after he had left uh, but those were all of his players like yeah. he was the one that recruited them he knows what talent looks like uh, you know when he first got here i was just shaking my head a little question questionable of him but i believed in him because not that it wasn't the pedigree but it was how passionate he was you listen to Eric talk, you can just tell how much it means to him. Eric Bell has done such a good job with this soccer program in his seven years, and really, I think you could argue, right there along with men's basketball over the last 10 years, the level of improvement, where it's at now as to where it was, I don't think there's been as big of a gain as there has been at Garvey over the last couple of years. And I think that comes with the fact that the coaches are invested. I mean the basketball coach he was a tcu alum yep. eric's whole family is invested in this program uh you know i have his wife and his kids i mean he used to babysit his kids and and, and friends with his wife and they're just in, they're every bit as invested in this program and in, in eric's career as eric is so it's having that support system around you and having those coaches who eat breathe live and die by you know wanting to make their pro program successful wanting to have lives here i mean i don't think unless eric unless somebody came to eric with a notre dame job or a women's head coach for a, a an emma or nwsl team or something like that i don't think eric would leave tcu and what also speaks volumes right across the way over at lufton stadium jim schlossnagel he was courted by mississippi state in the offseason best facility in the entire country they spent more money on it and an, and an sec program and he said no he said he felt like life here in fort worth what he's built and how much equity he has here i mean it would make sense to leave and there's it's like that all over campus it so seems like what's funny is i got a text message from one of the house of representatives that i met a couple years ago telling me that that uh slush was gone Not so and fast, i was friend. freaking out i was like you were lying to me he goes no i just got i just got a um a con confirmation that he accepted the job and lo and behold find out slush was staying at tcu it was one of the best days of my life that would be like gary patterson leaving and going somewhere and going to like ohio state we would all be crushed and it just shows right there, that's, a, that's a, one of the top baseball programs in the country. And he says, no, I've, I've built this here. I don't want to go anywhere else. And I mean, the entire TCU community indebted to him, Eric Bell, the entire, all the coaches across campus for not only how good of a job they do, but how passionate they are in what they do. As Butler tries to move this one ahead, trying to get something to build on moving forward is this one's played over on the side here is saying right with her is Tatum Condry and drawing a corner right there is the Butler. For Butler, is it's a nice play offensively by Gabrielle Limkyle. And it'll be the third corner of the matchup for Butler. And Ashley, while it's a 6-1 game, obviously this one's gotten out of hand, gotten away from the Bulldogs. If you can net one here late, it's something to build on at least going forward, get something positive offensively. I mean, you want to try to at least 
chisel away at the deficit. Um, if you can score a goal, great. I mean, it's not going to do anything much to the to the final result, but it's the fact that you that you did it. Um, so uh, for Butler, you're you're trying to get in there and you're trying to create those opportunities, and you want to keep you want to keep going because if you just hang your head and fall, the next game's going to be even harder. 2.40 to go in this one, but an impressive showing from TCU as they have been strong offensively, best offensive output of the year as you get a look at Terry St. John and Rob Allman. It's been a long afternoon for the co-head coaches for Butler. They'll take their group back home and regroup in Indianapolis before they head to Marquette. We get a foul call there on Peyton Cruz. Give it right back over to the Bulldogs. As we mentioned, they'll go to Marquette next Sunday. TCU take on the Iowa State Cyclones right here on Fox. Another matchup on Fox on Sunday with West Virginia and Ashley that opening weekend. It's always a very, very critical one. You want to get off on the right foot in conference play. Yeah, you know, th so one of, the, one of the things that a lot of coaches stress is you want to win at home. No matter what it is, you want to win at home because it's really hard to win on the road. So winning that first conference game is big because you want to start, you want to create the precedence that you are going to win at home. You're not going to lose here at Robbie Go Ro I can't say it right this second. Uh, you want to win right here at the stadium and take it to every single team as they walk on. They know that they're at a disadvantage because you, they're playing on your home territory and you win here. TCU so far this year, 4-0-1 here at Garvey, looking to move to 5-0-1 as Peyton Cruz fires it across now. Loffrey in the middle now. Butler's there to knock that one away. What will be interesting to see is how Eric Bell and Ryan Higginbotham, how they approach their keeper situation moving forward. Do we see Emily Alvarado next weekend or do we see Katie Lund the rest of the way? This has typically been around the time of year that the TCU staff has started to make their choice to figure out who their girl is in net. I think this is the point where you have to go with consistency. The more consistency that you can create, the better off you are in the long run. I mean, if you get an easy game, though I hate saying easy game, but if you get a game where, you know, the pressure isn't as high, yeah, you let Emily play. But I think right now you, you stick to consistency and creating as good of a program as you can with the same players who can come out every single day. And TCU, a good opportunity to rest some bodies here at the end of this one. As it was an offensive explosion for TCU, a hat trick from Kayla Hill. Goals from Messiah Bright, Maddie Warren, and then Cash Lou as it's an explosion for TCU to end non-conference play. It's a 6-1 win over the Butler Bulldogs. That's just how they wanted to finish up non-conference. I think this is when you see TCU starting to move into that top 25. I think that they've played well enough and proven themselves against Butler, against Missouri, um, you know, even against Santa Clara, that they can hold their own and that they deserve to be up there and really getting looks. Uh, you know, they did so well today to get at the, at the defense and really create opportunities and score. I mean, six goals, that's a crazy amount of Goals. And you saw it from all around, not just the deep, not just the offense. You saw it from the defense too. A marquee win for TCU, 6-1 over number 20 or number 23 Butler this afternoon. Special thanks to our producer and assistant director Michaela Lewis. Our director was Tyler Nelson. Trey Hilly was our TV. Claire Laging, she was our graphic op. Bug off was Christian Bussler. Meryl Posey was on EVS. Katie and Tony Samanovich, terrific job on engineering. Andy Haskett, Danny Hacker, our audio men, Kobe Schaefer, Stephen Near, Brandon Hatfield, and Tim Daly were on cameras today. It was a big one for the Frogs. For Ashley Bullington, this is Kyle Cruz saying so long. Our final 6-1. TCU wins it over Butler.